<laughs> Top of the morning, friends and family. <laughs> we are going to build our very first bioactive enclosure for our leopard gecko. <laughs> our crested gecko Dio. <laughs> We've got our 12 by 12 by 24 tall. Too tall to fit in this video. It's an enclosure! And we're gonna use this to build it with. First thing we need to do, the only thing we need to do, is go shopping for our stuff. And we're here with Taylor Roush. Taylor gave a great talk at Herpeton. Uh, back, was that 2019 now? That was 2019, uh, was, was it? 2018 or was 2019? It? I'm gonna say 2019. I feel okay. like it wasn't that long ago. It might have been 2019. I think 2019. So she knows a lot more about bioactive than me in, in the fact that I know nothing about bioactive. I've never built a bioactive enclosure in my entire life. So I'm hoping you can show me what I need to get um, and I, I assume, can you tell us a little bit about back, like you need to have a certain thing depending on what species? So yeah, you have to start out with what species you want to put in there. So what are you putting in there? A crested gecko. The easiest tropical, easiest to contain, easiest to maintain. So yeah, you cool. can do anything in bioactive though. Before we even go shopping, what are, what are the benefits of bioactive versus non-bioactive? You kind of have a whole living ecosystem in there. So you'll have isopods and everything. The benefits would just kind of be like lower maintenance. There is still maintenance. You got to clarify that there. Um, lower maintenance and honestly, just more enjoyment for you. You have live plants in there. You, it's a little bit of everything. You get more enjoyment and less maintenance. Let's start with sunshine or you have lighting, I assume, as well. I do have lighting. But I want to get one of the Vivtech bulbs from Ryan. From Ryan. Perfect. Yeah. So when it comes to substrate, what type of substrate are we talking about? Like, what's ideal? You want to get your base substrate, so your like dirt with sphagnum and everything for you to show to Morris. You also want to get like uh, lava rock or leca or hydro balls for the bottom for your drainage, and you have to have something in between your substrate and your drainage. Let's start there. <laughs> I probably should start with bringing my wallet. <laughs> yes. I, I'm going to sprint back and get my wallet real quick. Okay, sounds good. If you're going to do any shopping whatsoever, maybe a way to pay is something you should think about. This is a very good standard bioactive substrate. Josh's Frog makes a great one. It's got a little bit of everything in there. All right, we got bedding. I've only had to walk around the show once, so I'm not sure where hydro balls are. I've only gotten to walk around the show once, so you know more than me. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how to. Well, what about like screen door screen? Is that yeah, something? Okay. Totally, totally. I've got a whole roll of that at home. Yep, so. that works great. Perfect. Not a whole lot of supplies this year. One thing I should mention is that it is literally the last hour of the show on the last day of the show. <laughs> it still seems to somehow be quite packed and full, which is great. But uh, maybe supplies are a little short. Another piece of advice do your shopping at the beginning of the show. Yes. <laughs> I feel like the, the mossy stuff, I'd like it to be like green and look nice and vibrant inside, so maybe like... There's moss. Some moss pieces, <laughs> yeah. And that's real like it. Yeah. It's gonna keep living, that's, yeah, see? Any, I want everything to like look alive and be alive. And you, you need, my understanding is that you need to keep replenishing leaf litter to feed the... The trutivores. Gotcha. Which would be your isopods and spring plants. Plants are also a good one. Would you say uh, pothos are probably the most hardy of all? Pothos are good, phyllodendrons are really good, bromeliads are also really good. Yeah, no, I... If they're big enough, Isopods will also be a small food source for your gecko. I imagine there are certain species that are better for a humid climate versus a drier climate. <laughs> Most of them are pretty humid. Right, the so, underground dwelling. Yes, yeah, yeah. they're gonna turn your soil essentially. Right, right, right. That makes sense. What's up, D? How you doing, man? Oh, oh good, Gunner. brother. Nice to see you. Good, you too, man. Daniel Stolies, ladies and gentlemen. Just okay. put your nose to it and, and um. <laughs> I know you can't what? smell this through the camera. What? This snake literally smells like maple syrup. No. Somebody told me that and I was like, I had to come smell it for myself. Wow. Why? <laughs> Why? You know, it's gonna be one of those things somebody with more 
uh, time and, and the knowledge should, show, should solve for us. Um, here's something interesting though. Although they don't, say, they don't share the same area, it comes from Africa, Northern Africa, at least these ones came from Egypt. So what I'm thinking is, I don't know, you know, black turtles do smell funky like that too. So maybe the musk of these animals, for whatever reason, has some similarities. And that's why we smell uh, a similar maple syrup. So dairy cows and like giant oranges are usually really good because they're uh, really abundant. They breed really prolifically and they're larger. And then you can also mix in dwarf whites with them. Dwarf whites are going to get down farther and they're a little bit smaller. Um, either one will work. So the larger because species kind of stay more at the top processing things and the smaller ones get down to the bottom. So we definitely want So we definitely want to get a blend, I would say. Of, yes. Of both. And okay. then if we can find springtails today, springtails will also be beneficial, but they'll also show up on their own too. We got springtails. Multiple different leaf litters. There's almond, oak, uh, magnolia. I like magnolia uh, for a lot of like my more tropical geckos. Okay. Any reason in particular? Just bigger leaf. When would you replace the leaf? Because again, the, the leaf is to feed the isopods. It'll and help every... feed them, yeah. It'll help feed and them. It'll so... help break down into the soil and give you more nutrients into the soil. Gotcha. So, but at what point, like, when you basically, if you see no more leaf, should you always see leaf? No, you no. don't always have to. You but can once see it's like, gone... or like skeleton leaves. Uh, you'll see that they'll they'll break down the leaf pretty quickly. Um, you can just replenish it as it starts to go. So okay. When it's like halfway gone, you can add a couple and... Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> this, this. I just place this down in the soil and just grow it like a plant. Like a you plant. could also wrap it uh, with any kind of wire around the branches that you have and it'll grip on with arboreal roots or uh, like aeroid roots. Okay, okay. Yeah. They're not related to an orchid, but same concept. They will latch on and you water from the top. Okay. So this gentleman obviously has plenty of available isopods. What, what, where can people find you? Do you sell stuff online as well? Yeah. The show? Isopod.com. What are you trying to do with bioactive for? Um, so we're going to start with a crested gecko. Probably your best bet is probably something dwarf. So you do dwarf white, dwarf pink, or sorry, dwarf white, dwarf purples. Um, there's one species called tarragona, and then there's another one called Nambia caminensis. Um, those are all small. You can actually keep them in there. The one thing that I probably tell anybody is when you put the water dish in there, just let it overflow so it stays wet underneath. And that's pretty much where you'll find your dwarf species. If you just hand it over, I'll pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, I sell these cultures are 10 counts for 10 bucks. You're going to get so addicted, you'll eventually take the plunge and you'll end up with these guys. Whoa. Those are cool. And this, and this, and I think... I think I think a pothos as well. I think yeah. just, uh, the more live like places you can just kind of crawl around and pothos works. Yeah, <laughs> I want to I want to buy something it? from you right <laughs> now. Everyone. Can I please? I, I know. Uh, let's let's talk about at the auction. Oh yeah. Cool. Yeah. Give me a couple seconds. Worst case, you're in your own from it, right? Uh, I'm looking for lighting for a crested gecko. The crested gecko. All right. These are a jungle cover midday glaze. Now, the names are kind of a misnomer. What we're really looking at is how much radiation is coming out and how far it's going. So we're looking at 18 inches. So we're looking for a crested gecko, correct? That'd be around this like wider range right here. So we're looking for the distance, and these can go up to 16 to 20 on the jungle cover, and about 24 plus on the midday blaze and that's kind of what we're looking for so even though you're bold might say something like desert or something like that we're really just looking for this distance so for crested gecko 18 inches i would go for the jungle cover because they can at least go up into it and it gives them enough space to get away from it thank you very much i appreciate it great seeing you you too um if people wanted to reach out to you are you available to speak to people about bio bioactive and yeah my Instagram is my Instagram is Moon Age Exotics with periods in between Moon and Age Moon Age Exotics with periods in between. So Moon Period Age Period Exotics. Yes. Okay. Correct. Gotcha. And it's got a blue tree monitor as the photograph on it. So now that we've got all of our supplies, we are going to build the background. I've kind of mapped out where things are going to go in the enclosure. And what we're going to do for the background is we're going to do like a blend. Different styles of background. So when I was at Snake Discovery at the build-off enclosure, which is what inspired me to do this in the first place. We I've got, seen the video. you seen the video? Yeah. 
Have you seen the video? If you haven't, you better watch it right now. I'm gonna do a blend of the expanding spray foam and Clint's Gorilla Glue method. Isn't that stuff dangerous? I mean, can be dangerous. Sure, yeah. It's, uh, there's flammable gas in here. You could light it on fire and it could explode. So I didn't like the silicone smell at all on the spray. Are you gonna snort through the whole video? No. Okay, we're gonna use Gorilla Glue. So first things first. So my plan is to put this as the main feature inside and on the back. And this will also serve as a planter box for my pothos here. We'll stick our sticks in the spray foam and those will hold the bromeliads. You almost hit my face with that <laughs> good corner. You're, good thing you're quick. Are you going to do all the building or am I going to help? You're going to help. First thing you gotta do, shake the spray foam, shake the spray foam, shake the spray foam, shake it, shake it up, shake it, shake it up, shake it, shake it up, like you hate the stuff. Shake it, shake it hard, shake it, shake it hard, shake it, shake it hard down the boulevard. Ooh, 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 ooh. Shake it, shake it up, shake it, shake it up, shake it, shake it up like you don't give a. Yeah, make it a big circle. All right, so that needs to set for a little bit, Noah. So you want to go like jump on the trampoline while we're waiting for that to set or something? Sure. All right. just fell off of the tripod. I ugh, can't make this stuff up. I really hope this microphone is still working. Check. One note about spray foam. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's very sticky. Sticks to everything. Yeah. Be careful where you get it. What I'm thinking is that we'll take these sticks and use them to hold the bromeliads on the side of the wall. We'll take a piece of wire and wire them to these sticks so they sit outside the wall and, and Dio can climb up the stick and hang it on the bromeliad. How does that sound? I need something a little taller to hold this up. Our foam seems to have held up very nicely. Now we're going to take our serrated butter knives and just carve away some of the foam. And then we'll start with the Gorilla Glue as soon as we're done with that. So just kidding, these knives are not really serrated so I'm going to go ahead and do the carving with that. That works really well. Now since we're not using silicone, you probably wouldn't need to carve this foam, because the Gorilla Glue would probably stick to it no problem. However, just to be sure, and also because I want to cut it back a little bit, that's why we're cutting it. The foam ready to go. It's a tight space to work with in there, so it's that's definitely the part of the challenge. Now we're gonna do the uh, Gorilla Glue. The Gorilla Glue process is gonna take a while. So, Gorilla Glue, of course, sets up. If you spray it down with some water first, you get a little misting on the surface that you're gonna be adhering anything to the Gorilla Glue. So that's our first step, is to spray down the back. And we're gonna have to do it one side at a time, because we have to leave it laying on its back while we do the back side, and then we'll have to put it on one side while we're doing one side, then on the other side. So it's gonna be a, a long process to do all that. It's kind of like syrup. Yeah. If you put that in a, like a syrup bottle at a restaurant, nobody would know. So I've got my substrate all mixed up. I threw in a bunch of cocoa blocks to add extra and to help the, uh, even the walls maintain humidity and moisture. So that's what we got. half hour or so, 45 minutes, we're just gonna keep pushing down on this every like few minutes and as the Gorilla Glue expands, kinda have to keep it clamped down, but in this case we're not clamping, we're just gonna come back and keep pushing. While we're waiting for this thing to finish setting up, I wanna show you what I've done here real quick. 
At the bottom of the cork, I left a small opening so that the roots of the planted pothos that's planted in the cork can travel down and get down into the main substrate down below. And that'll also help all of the little isopods travel up through that soil as well and get to wherever they need to be, whether it's up at the top by the plant soil up there or down in the main soil on the bottom. It's been about 40 minutes. I think we're ready to stand it up and see how it helps. <laughs> Decent back there. Something we can live with for sure. You mean something Dio can live with? I just get so smart, kid. Okay, now we'll turn outside and we'll do the side part. This would be so much easier if we're just doing the background, but I want to do all three sides. I'm every closure we we'll do it like this. We're gonna do all three sides. Biffed out. What do you think, Noah? So we're gonna. I, I broke one of the branches, so I got it holding on with a, a clamp there, with some more glue. But <laughs> we're going to uh, add in our drainage layer of the hydro balls, and then we're going to put. Where's that screen at, bud? I can tell you for sure. Next time we're gonna do this outside. We're making a mess in here. But yeah, hydro balls, and then the screen layer on top of that. Then we'll put our soil. We'll get our springtails. And our isopods in there, throw our leaf litter on top, and then we'll throw in the plants. What are springtails? Springtails are um, a type of bug, and they eat up poop and stuff. So the, the Wait, idea- is that poop in there? That's not really poop, it's just the, well, there's a little substrate for them to live on. So what the springtails do is they, and the isopods, they eat up all the dead stuff so that it's like real life in there. You know, it's a bioactive enclosure. They create new soil. And they eat up little pieces of poop and stuff like that. So we should never have to include this enclosure at all. It should just maintain itself. Thank you guys for tuning in today and checking out our very first bioactive enclosure build ever. Uh, I think we're going to do a lot more of these. What do you think, Noah? Yeah? Yeah. All right. Well, you guys take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the next video. Aloha.